Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, give some examples here of how to deal with uh, intensity from a point source. So what we're looking at here is we have some sort of light bulb here. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we know that the intensity at 30 centimeters is 2 watts per square meter. And we're going to use that to try to calculate the power of the source. So um, let's see, if we're 30 centimeters out, so I'm just going to put a eyeball here uh, to represent our observation here that the intensity is 2 watts per square meter and then this distance here which I'm going to call R1 here is going to be 0.3 meters now this was 30 centimeters but written in meters would uh, um, be 0.3 meters and again the important thing to realize about these problems is that if we were to make draw a sphere like an imaginary sphere important thing to realize is all of the energy from the bulb is radiating out where it goes through this sphere. So when we calculate the intensity, intensity is power over area. The intensity is given in this problem of 2 watts per square meter. The power we do not know, but the area, again, is the area of this imagic, um, imaginary spherical surface around this bulb. Okay, Now there's not actually a physical surface there, it's kind of like an imaginary surface, but that energy is spread out over that surface. And the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r, which is 0.3 meters squared. And now what we just need to do is just solve this equation for p. So the power of this bulb is going to be equal to uh, 2 watts per square meter times 4 pi times 0.3 meters squared and I get a value of okay I got 2.26 watts out of that I'm just going to double check that one more time. Two point two six watts. Okay, so we got a pretty low intensity source, and that's perfectly fine. All right, next question. We're going to try to now calculate the intensity at 90 square centimeters and at 10 square centimeters. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, Method number one, now that we know the power, we can just directly calculate the intensity. And I'll go ahead and do that right here. So the intensity at 90 centimeters is going to equal the power, 2.26 watts, divided by the area, 4 pi times the radius squared. And now I'm going to, now I'm going to use 90 centimeters, right, which is 0.9 meters, right, and that's being squared. And we're going to get a value of, let's see, 2.26 divided by 0.22. And I get about 0.22 watts per square meter. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of check that. If we go from 0.3 to 0.9, we have tripled the uh, radius. So the intensity should ball, fall by a factor of nine. I'm just going to double check that. We were at two. Yep. So our original two watts per square meter fell by a factor of uh, nine. That gives us the 0.22 watts per square meter. To get the intensity at 10 centimeters, I can just directly calculate it now. The intensity equals 2.26 watts divided by four pi times 0.10 meters squared. Now here we're expecting the intensity to go up because we're closer to our source. And if you give me a moment I'll calculate a value. And I'm getting now about 18 watts per square meter. And again you know you notice that's a lot bigger. Well when we go from 30 centimeters to 
10 centimeters, we have cut the distance by a third. And because of that R squared in the bottom, we would expect nine times the intensity. So you notice the two turned into an 18. All right, so this is you know one way to calculate these new intensities. Another way, if you watch my previous video, I actually uh, derived a pair of equations here where, where, where I said uh, like I1 is equal to a constant over R1 squared and I2 is equal to a constant over R2 squared. And when you solve these for the constant and put these together, you end up with the following equation here. That's uh, I1 times R1 squared is equal to I2 times R2 squared. And we could have also used this equation to calculate their new intensities. And I'll go ahead and go through one of the two examples. I'll go ahead and go through this one here. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna compare my first observation, which is this, two watts at 30 centimeters, to my uh, new observation, which is going to be 10 centimeters and an unknown intensity. So my I1, R1, I'm going to go ahead and use 2 watts per square meter for I1 times R1 squared. Now it turns out in this equation, it doesn't really matter if we put these in centimeters or in meters because the units will just cancel out anyway. If you're in doubt, always go to just standard units. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that 0.3 meters squared equals now my I2 R2. The I2 I don't know but the R2 I'm doing 10 centimeters which I'll go ahead and put in as 0.1 meters and that's being squared and the next step is to just solve this for I2 and you would do that by taking this and dividing by this and don't forget to square it. So I'm going to do that now and I get 18 watts per square meter out of that, just like I did before. So again, this is just intended to be uh, you know, some uh, relatively simple examples of how to use the inverse square law. Um, standard units for intensity in physics are the watt per square meter, but there's other units of intensity uh, depending on the context and, uh, um, and what you're doing. But, but the mathematical law here, intensity being power over area, should be the same for uh, regardless of the units you're using. So I hope this video helps demonstrate how to uh, use the inverse square law. Have a great day.